The only people for me are the mad ones, the ones who are mad to live, mad to talk, mad to be saved, desirous of everything at the same time, the ones who never yawn or say a commonplace thing, but burn, 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 like fabulous yellow Roman candles exploding like spiders across the stars. You are the narrator of your own life, and I found this out early. I grew up in a household with no books. Um, things weren't talked about very much in those days. And uh, I guess I read uh, Albert Camus' The Stranger, and I found out there was a way to communicate that took us much, much deeper into ourselves. Um, later on, I went back and I, I did a doctoral degree in this area, and it's, it shows that when we write, we actually reduce stress, decrease the symptoms, people that are ill, actually strengthen the immune system. These are all measurable. Shorten recovery periods, reduce pain and pain medications, and improve the family relationships as well as relationships with you know, the health providers. And the wonderful thing about writing is if you can read, you can write. I mean, uh, most people are intimidated to be writers, but uh, if you, you can read, and, and writing and reading go hand in hand. Um, to read like a writer is really all you have to learn to get started. Uh, writing allows you to examine your life and know what you're really thinking and feeling. And in the household I grew up in, that was very important because, you know, there was not much being said. People were not always the, at their nicest and best. There was a lot of alcohol involved. So I found this in books and, and through writing. Um, it's different than talking. When we talk, of course, we, we use a lot of body language. Writing is between you and you. Um, often what you can't talk about, you can write about, I mean, and, and find out what you're really thinking. And, and really, you don't let other people define who you are, but come strictly into the heart of who you really are. Um, of course, being a coagulationist, I had to bring in a picture of the blood. Uh, the, the blood blood is for us the symbol of the living. Its course proceeds without pause from generations to death, from mother body, in and out of the body of the child, and in the waking state, and in sleep. And uh, writing is like our blood, the, the pump of a heart. Uh, this is the Niagara River where I'm from, outside of Buffalo, New York. And uh, well, I've learned over many, many years of my own personal writing, daily writing, and writing with you know, thousands of other people, that all we need to ask of writing is for it to flow, to pour out of us like a river. And the simplest, this may be the take-home slide of the whole presentation, writing is like a skipping stone. Just allow yourself to put the pen on the paper, and allow it to skip, skip, and eventually it'll go deep, as it always does. I love that photo. <laughs> um, I just thought I would kind of bring up some of the, the tricks of writing. Um, first of all, details. And then the second trick is details, and the third trick is details. The, the more unique these details are, the more exciting it is. And the interesting thing about it is the more unique the detail is, the more universal it becomes. And of course, then, if we have to remember all of the great senses. We, the writer paints with the palette of the senses. It's what we see and hear and smell and touch and taste, all in our own special, unique way that makes the difference in everything that we read and everything that we write. It's, it's the conveyance from the heart, really, you know, that whole idea of the blood and the heart and the water. Uh, Pearl da uh, Bailey said this very best. She said, you can taste a word. And interesting about the senses, there's something called synesthesia, where you know you can actually hear a color, and, and you can really get into all of these different flavors. And um, writing, the best writing is unique and, and specific. And Oscar Wilde said, "Be yourself. Everyone else is already taken." And that's the real goal: is to try to find where you, where, where this meets you and your heart, where you really, really are coming from when you write. Um, the groups that I'm involved in, we, we basically do all first draft writing, and we never say anything bad about the first draft. It's all about treating that first draft like it's a baby. You know, that we, we, we never yell at the baby. We always say, oh, how cute, how wonderful. Never let the facts get in the way of a good story. Uh, writing, of course, everyone's heard this. Writing is a lie that tells the truth. It's truly how you remember something that counts, and I think that's... Um, really an important thing to remember is embellishing is fine with writing. The fictive word is exactly what we're looking for. A lot of people have stories that they've never told anyone, and they come and sit in a writing group, and suddenly this gets into a creative story that is just marvelous you know, and uh, amazes everyone. 
And uh, our wonderful deceased Rod, Roger Ebert, believe it or not, said, said it best, I think. He said, the muse visits during, not before the act of composition, and the writer takes dictation from the place and the mind that knows where to go next. And that's really key, because a lot of people feel they have to have the perfect place to write, and that's not true in any of the works. Duke Ellington, I don't need time, I need a deadline. And these are, the, these are the whole rules of the writing group. Keep the pen moving, don't stop for anything, go quickly without rushing, don't stop to correct or think of an exact word. And the, the idea here is to focus for short periods of time, maybe even five minutes. And I'm always amazed at what people can write in five minutes. Um, the point of this slide is that um, language follows emotion. When we get deeply in touch with our emotion, emotions, the, the imagination opens up, and it comes into this intuitive thing that, that changes everything about how that word group is flowing, like the river, like the blood. Um, <laughs> I included this because I edited my wife's book uh, this year, this last year, and really working with her when her words was like making love. I, I don't think I've ever felt more close to her and intimate with her than when I was actually editing her book and actually throwing a lot of the stuff out and she was bringing it back to me. You know, I, I'd throw it out, she'd bring back 10,000 words to read. Um, and this is my last one. Just, I, I think that we all need to remember that lives that are written are not forgotten. You don't need to be Hemingway or Faulkner or Jack Kerouac. The goal is to be yourself and hand that on to people around you. Thank you. Thank you very much.